often hear people say, I'm just not creative. But we all have ideas. I mean, imagine if we can just bring our ideas out into the material world. And, you know, we've been doing this. Excuse me. <laughs> It seems to be. Oh, excuse me. Imagine if we could just bring these out into the material world. And this is something we've been doing throughout our history. So much so that we've created tools which allow us to extend our creativity. Even the simplest tool encapsulates a history of design and perfection, which allows us to be even more creative. Now, you may ask yourself, why am I telling you all of this? <laughs> well, let's go back one year. We're in our design studio at the Royal College of Art in London. After a long summer of working abroad in Tokyo, Taipei, Berlin, and New York. And we're looking around us, and we're seeing people doing just that. They're materializing their ideas right in front of us. Of course, we're in the design studio. Um, but what intrigues us is how people are creating and what are the tools they use, and how the tools influence what they create. And then we start to look at outside the studio. What about other people? How do we create in general? And that's when we have our light bulb moment. Everybody is creative, but the modern tools for creation are becoming so complex and disconnected from the way we think that we end up not taking that much ideas into reality. And that's when we start to believe that we are not creative. So we come up with a plan. We're going to design a tool that's going to be simple and intuitive, as simple as making sandcastles on the beach when we were kids, and we think it's a great plan. Yeah, it's like the greatest plan. But very soon we discover that we're not the only ones thinking in that direction. A lot of people are trying to enable people to create, especially connecting the digital and the physical world. So we have from dolls that you move around and then they're animating a doll in the digital world, or creating pottery with your hands. Even our tutors are not encouraging us to go in that direction. They're telling us it's a risky area. So we're suddenly in front of this big, big mountain and no idea how to cross it. But still, we have one belief, that there's something to be done. So we decide to take the journey. Have you heard about Howard Gardner and his theory of multiple intelligences? His theory states that we have multiple intelligences that we develop and we use throughout our life. For instance, kinesthetic, when you're moving your body and learning how to use it. For example, when you're learning how to play the piano or learning how to ski. Mathematical, when you're using logic to solve different problems. Or linguistic, when you formulate your thoughts and communicate them through words. Or spatial, we call it the mind's eye. So it's this time when you have these images in your head and you're understanding them, rotating them, and seeing them here in your head. Spatial intelligence. So If I imagine these two cubes, I can see them in my mind. I have a good idea of their shape, how they relate to each other, how they are positioned in space. And all this is sort of instant in my mind. If I want to communicate this with you without you being in my mind, which I hope you're not, I have to go through all this description, which, which you're going to read, translate in your own visual language into your special intelligence. And now that's very interesting, because Creation is believed to rely mainly on spatial intelligence. But the tools that we use for creation, and especially the modern digital tools, computers, for instance, rely a lot on linguistic and mathematical intelligence. You have to decompose actions to achieve what you have imagined at the beginning. So the result of this is you spend your time translating your thinking between your different intelligences. So our idea is Would it be possible, perhaps, to switch this and design a tool that would rely mainly on the use of the spatial intelligence? So, let's think of dancers. They use a lot their kinesthetic intelligence, and we had a great example this morning. But um, we were very surprised to discover that the choreographer Wayne McGregor uses a lot of sketching in his creation process. And we thought that, after all, It's not that far from designers and architects. 
So the way they create is um, his team, his dancers, they try new moves, they repeat them, and then they go and sketch them. And they do this in an iterative way so that they are creating live. So immediacy is very important for them. And sketching allows them to have this immediate storage of the information. Now, let's think of architecture. The scale of the project is so big that you cannot work alone. You have to work in teams. So communication is crucial. I mean, from the first sketches of the lead architect to the 3D visualization team to the client, there is so much communication needed to make sure that the initial ID makes it into the final output. So in this process, there could be a lot of miscommunication and things lost in the process. So for example, here, Mr. Jean Nouvel clearly wanted more holes in his building. Our journey started with so let's go back to the plan. What could we um, we have all this inspiration now, so what do we do with it? So we start brainstorming and designing experiments to truly understand how humans create. We develop a set so of we develop this set of uh, research for show tools that the people of experiments like to the limitations that will start uh, and work around them. to help us understand Very quickly, this. We realized so that the world we live in is and give us the key ingredients for logic it. and insights came so from this first process. we come up with one uh, main element the simple set of rules. With a simple set of so if you have a simple set of rules and, and for example when you have Lego and it's you understand that you have to connect the two pieces right once you master that that it's very simple. You can create like from castles to like entire cities, even people. Then the second one is uh, its physicality. So right now the digital tools are losing physicality, but still when we're creating, we need to be physical. That's our human nature. Throughout our experiments, we discovered that this is very important. And the third one is immediacy. So you have this idea in your head. But you need to be able to like, very quickly see it outside and like, understand it to be able to have this iteration process all the time. So at the end of all of this experimentation, we have uh, this simple cube. And this was kind of one of our proudest experiments because it seemed to have tackled everything. It's a small cube of acrylic layers in which you think of an idea, then you take the sections of that idea and you trace each section, and you stack these acrylic layers on top of one another. So it's simple, it's immediate, and it's physical. You're holding your object in your hand. Not to mention you can share with others. Other people can see this uh, object. But this is not the tool we were set out to, to, to create. What this helped us do is it helped us better understand the human element of the tool. And once we be had that better understanding, we could start opening the doors to technology. And, and this is where we really got crazy. I mean, we started thinking of anything from holographic displays to augmented reality solutions to six-axis arms, which allow you to sketch freely in space anywhere you want. So we really get crazy. But to be honest, we are not computer scientists. We are not electronic engineers or robotic specialists. So most of this and most of what we know about this is what we've seen on YouTube videos. And we watch a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> but it's not that bad. At the same time, we grew up with these guys. And <laughs> you would probably have done all of this with a few showing gums and a matchbox. So it gives some confidence. And we have the chance to live at an exciting time where a lot of bricks are around us, the bricks for creation. And we can just use them, assemble them, and start to build with them. So for the next three weeks, we learn how to code. We connect some wires. We spend some time in the workshop. And we befriend a company specialized in augmented reality. And when we feel we are ready, we travel to their office in Paris and test our new prototype. Gravity is born. So what is gravity? It's a tool that allows you to sketch in 3D using augmented reality. We created a hardware software solution. And it's composed of a tablet, a pen, and a visualization uh, tool such as augmented reality uh, glasses, or virtual reality mass. So let's have a look at how it works. So you're sketching as if you were sketching on a pad of paper. And the controls on the tablet allow you to choose on which, on which plane you're sketching, so that you can quickly materialize what's in front of you and uh, as easily as sketching different, in different planes. So um, what's great is that you don't have to rely on CAD or perspective drawing. And so uh, we built this prototype 
so that it would work with augmented reality. But we also like try to uh, like look at a lot of different possibilities. So we also tried with uh, uh, virtual reality, the Oculus Rift, and um, so I think it's time for for a demo. So Shay, are you ready for a live demo? Yeah, let's see if we can uh, make a chair here. So as Pierre said, you draw on a 2D surface. So I'm going to draw the beginnings of my chair here, just the profile. And this is all 2D, as you would on a piece of paper. But what I have here now is the ability to then change the plane in which I'm sketching. So I can move this chair up, can move it around, and just get the next profile of the chair started. It's a bit hard to draw a chair in front of so many people. <laughs> and then I'm able to rotate the plane once again. And I think I'm going to make an outdoor chair. So with outdoor chair, you have a lot of these, um, these slats in the chair. So change the slats. And I'll rotate once more to do the back side. You can see this maybe not the best uh, chair here. Maybe we change the color. Yeah. We can do something like yellow across the back here. So with a few strokes, oof, <laughs> it's not the most beautiful chair. But with, as you can see, with a few strokes, I'm able to kind of drop what I have in my mind into uh, a 3D object. Now, this gives me a good, si a good sense of the, the, the shape and the volume in which I was trying to achieve and which I was thinking of. And I can quickly iterate on this process. So I can, I can quickly delete and, and start again. And so it's just a, a great way to create a, a few bits of 3D content. All right, so uh, as we, have, we can see, you can quickly create something, but what do you do with it? So um, the great thing is that you can export any content that you create as a 3D file. And you could just, I don't know, like uh, 3D print it if you want a, a physical object. Or maybe you want to load an existing 3D content in Gravity so that you can make some annotations. You could use it to quickly communicate an ID in 3D, even if you're not like a, like a designer or an, archi an architect. But also, you could just have fun, just like create some crazy worlds and quickly like put them in, in, in 3D environments. So, um, this animation, everything has been created in Gravity. And I don't know, it took us uh, five minutes. So this is really uh, like as easy as sketching on paper. So um, what's really interesting is that by using augmented reality, we, have, we are removing the screens from the early stage of creation. And that's very important because as architects and designers uh, are used to, when you're creating, you're just in a studio with people f just in sitting in front of their computer. So uh, right now, you can focus on what you're creating rather than uh, having to think of what functionality you're going to use in the software to show that to your colleague. And you're creating in your real environment. So you're looking at it as if it was a real object. But the object that you create exists in the digital world. So it means that the possibilities are endless. So as you see, we are really passionate about this project. Um, what's very interesting to us um, is if most of the tools that are out there for creation are really about like, bridging this uh, ideation and materialization, we believe that somehow gravity makes this gap a bit smaller. Actually, we no really longer have to translate our thinking between the different intelligences, as we described before. Um, we try to really design a tool that's uh, relying mainly on your spatial intelligence, so you can just stay in this sort of state of mind and create like this. Yeah, so our aim was that since the beginning. But then, after testing gravity with so many people, we discovered something else, that people are connecting again to their kinesthetic intelligence. So they're, they're, isn't it what the craft is all about? So we're bringing a bit of craft into the digital tools. No, no two drawings are the same. So it's, it's very interesting to see how people start to, to use their body to start uh, communicating their ideas. So if we go again and see Shay, uh, are you up for another drawing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't just do yeah. it last time, but let's and see. So he's there thinking about another idea, and he's only like visualizing it here and communicating through the strokes of his hand. He no longer has to ha pass through different other like complicated uh, systems. So um, gravity is connecting uh, the kinesthetic with the spatial, which was something that we found when we started testing with people. 
And it's great. Like, little by little, people are creating their own techniques. They master the tool, and then they start going crazy. So it's, uh, it's very interesting. We know that, that if you really put the right tools into people's hands, they can, they can create. They will be creative. So we're very happy to have arrived to the conclusion that when you create a tool and you put it in the hands of people, there is actually no conclusion. It is only the beginning. Thank you.